Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about sensory processing disorder. What is it and how do we treat it? But before we jump into that, are you new to my channel? Welcome! Make sure that you are subscribed and have those notifications turned on because I release videos on Mondays and on Thursdays and I don't want you to miss out. But let's jump into today's topic. Now sensory processing disorder is not something that's currently recognized as a medical or mental health condition on its own. Therefore, we won't find it in the DSM or any other diagnostic manuals. Sensory process or sensory integration is the way in which our central nervous system of the body receives messages from the senses and uses that information to act in an appropriate motor or behavioral response. Therefore, sensory processing disorder, or SPD, which has also been called sensory integration dysfunction, is a condition in which the sensory signals, so all those signals that we're receiving by our central nervous system, do not become organized into an appropriate response. And I just want to take a minute to make sure that you understand that. So we're, we're constantly bombarded with signals that we take in through all five senses, right? And our central nervous system organizes those so that we can respond appropriately. Meaning if we touch something hot, ah, we jerk our fingers away. We don't actually have to think about it in order to have that immediate response. However, when we have a sensory processing disorder, we're not able to do that. Things can get confused and sounds and tastes and textures and everything can be extremely overwhelming. Now, sensory processing disorder, which I'll now refer to as SPD, just for ease of speech, may affect only one sense, like only hearing, or it can affect many senses. And every person with SPD will react differently and have different intensity of responses to stimuli. Just like everything, everybody's gonna be different. This means that some people with SPD will have an overreaction to a stimuli. This could be screaming, vomiting, throwing a tantrum, or people can have an underreaction, like not covering your ears when a loud noise goes by, like a fire truck or something like that, or not responding to physical touch. Someone touches you and we just don't even know. We don't even know what to do with that. Or we taste really, really salty food that's kind of gross and we just don't spit it out. We're like, whatever. So it can be over or under response. Not everyone is gonna act the same. While SPD isn't diagnosable on its own, the issues that come along with it are often therefore attributed to autism spectrum disorder. And many professionals, just so you know, myself included, believe that this does need to change, that SPDs do need to be included in the DSM and other diagnostic manuals. However, after reading about sensory processing disorders as a whole, I could also see a lot of the symptoms being part of misophonia, various phobias, PTSD, schizophrenia, ADHD, or even borderline personality disorder. And if you're curious about any of the diagnoses that I just rattled off, I'll leave all the links to my videos in the description. So you can click down there and learn more. I also think it's important to note that this isn't something that's understood by all healthcare professionals. I personally wasn't even trained or taught about this in school at all. So it's important that you find someone who understands and specializes in sensory issues. After reading about sensory processing disorders as a whole, they believe there to be four types of them. And the first sensory processing disorder I wanna talk about is sensory modulation disorder. Now this disorder is characterized by the struggle to regulate our intensity of response to sensory stimuli. So someone with this disorder may hate textures of certain foods or hate having their hair or teeth brushed. And all of those things that they cannot stand, like all the textures and feelings and stuff like that, are not upsetting to most people. The second SPD is sensory discrimination disorder. Now this disorder is characterized by a difficulty accurately identifying qualities of a stimuli, meaning that they may use too much or too little force when doing a project. They could break something and not even realize that they're using that much strength or that the strength they used is too much. They could also struggle to pick an item out of a cluttered background. Like if we had a bunch of stuff scattered on the wall and I told them to grab you know, the keys that are hanging on that nail, they might not be able to see it and we have a really hard time finding those keys. Or they could also possibly move too fast or too slow for an activity. The third sensory processing disorder I wanna talk about is postural ocular disorder. This disorder is characterized by a struggle to manage visual and bodily movements. Therefore, people with this disorder can have a hard time balancing, tracking items in their eye line, and they can struggle to control their body movements and the amount of strength that's needed to complete a task. 
Some people even reported that they aren't able to discern between their dominant and non-dominant hand. And the fourth and final SPD I wanna talk about is dyspraxia. And this is when people struggle to plan, schedule, or execute things in a sequence. This can make it really hard for them to do everything they need to do each and every day. It can be difficult to move from one task to another, and they can even struggle with fine motor coordination. As for the causes of SPD, we don't really know. They've linked it to hypersensitivity to light, and they also know that there's a genetic link, but more research definitely needs to be done in order to fully understand it. But now let's get into the good news because there is treatment available and there are things we can do to manage better. And the most recommended type of treatment for SPDs is occupational therapy. Now, since I haven't talked about occupational therapy very much, just know that it's a type of therapy for those who are recuperating from either a physical or mental illness and it, encourage re it encourages rehabilitation through the performance of activities required in your daily life. What this means is that occupational therapists will help you better engage in the meaningful activities of your daily life. They'll meet you where you are emotionally and behaviorally and will help you set goals accordingly. Now I know occupational therapy can be difficult to kind of pin down and well daily life there's a lot that goes on but they meet you where you're at. So whatever you're able to accomplish, they're not gonna work on that. They're gonna work with you on the things you struggle to do every day. Maybe we struggle to set goals and to you know, execute something that needs to get done. Or maybe we struggle to brush our hair because we hate that feeling. They'll work with you so that you can push through some of that uncomfortability that comes with the sensory processing disorder so that you're able to do everything you need to each and every day. They also recommend speech and language therapy as well. And they also have talked a lot about CERTS, and that's S-C-E-R-T-S. -E and this is a research-based educational model for people on the autism spectrum. And for more information on this, you can click the link in the description because there's so much to read about each and every one of these types of treatment. Now, if the person who is struggling with a sensory processing disorder is a child, there's also DIR method, which is a developmental individual difference and relationship based method. And it uses a lot of floor time as part of its treatment. And a lot of people reported that it's super beneficial, but the overall goal of all these different types of treatment is sensory integration. And this can be done using many various types of therapy, but the goal is to help us to be able to be around stimuli that used to be upsetting or triggering and feel able to respond in an appropriate fashion. My whole goal of this video is just to make you aware, if you didn't already know, that these disorders do exist and that there is help available. Like I talked about in the past, the DSM is not the end all be all and not everything that we struggle with will be noted in a diagnostic manual, but that doesn't mean that we should suffer in silence. Occupational therapy and other treatments I mentioned can and do help. So reach out, speak up and know that it will get better. This video has been brought to you by the Kenyans on Patreon. If you would like to support the creation of these mental health videos, click the link in the description and check it out. Many of you have reached out recently asking me where you put questions for me. You know where you put them? Down in those comments below. Let me know. Do you have any questions about things I haven't spoke on before? You want new video topics on these certain questions? Let me know down below. And if you wonder if I already have a video on a mental health topic, search on YouTube. Write in my name, Katie Morton, add in some of those keywords or phrases, and those videos will pop up. I have about a thousand of them, so chances are I've talked about it before. But thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.